Okay, hi, uh, I'm Jeff Urich. I'm uh, head of marketing here at Nanosys, and uh, we're the quantum dot company. So we're the sort of uh, Q and QLED and QNED and quantum and all those ac great acronyms that have quantum dots. So you've been busy since the last video we did, three, four years ago? Very busy since the last video you did. Yeah, you know, since then we've seen a ton of uh, traction in mini LED LCDs, uh, just continued growth in regular uh, LCD business, IT products, and uh, fantastic new technology called QD OLED uh, that we're showing here today uh, with Samsung Display. So yeah, quantum dots everywhere. Uh, I hear it's the best. It's the best, OLED? yeah. Is it? I think it's the best of the best, yeah. The, especially in the TV space, um, the QD OLED, that's the S95C from Samsung uh, on top here. It's really the best quality uh, TV in the premium market today. I don't, any doubt about that. Um, super high peak luminance, we measured over 1300 nits. Can do 91% coverage of the BT2020 color gamut. Viewing angle is amazing. Uh, and it uses true RGB colors. So the way that the video signal works is every, every color, every pixel is made up of red, green, and blue elements. And so this display, uh, red plus green plus blue, blue equals white, W, white. Uh, and on this display, this is a G3 uh, OLED. This is the top of the line white OLED technology. It has a white subpixel, So it's mixing in white to boost the luminance. And the colors are a little darker. And this is a kind of subtle demo. I wonder how it'll work on your camera. But as you look here, as it fades into the darkness, you'll see some hue shifts and some flickering in some of these colors. And that's the uh, TV actively tone mapping with that white subpixel. It's constantly trying to, you can really see it here as this flickers as it comes up. It's constantly trying to use the white signal, the white uh, pixel, to boost the luminance of the display. And it's actively sort of recolor grading the content uh, all the time. Uh, we're also showing here a Sony uh, BVM X300 professional reference monitor. This is a $35,000 RGB OLED. So this is the kind of uh, monitor, this is very popular in Hollywood. A lot of movies are mastered on this. So the Samsung QD OLED and this uh, mastery monitor have the same performance. You don't see that flickering and those hue shifts uh, on these two top displays. Now the other demo that we have is a little bit different in the... Uh, Blu-ray player is complaining to me. That's a different... Is it the other? Uh, no, no, that's the LG yeah. remote. Well, I guess it's uh, end of the day and uh, we only have one loop playing right now. So uh, I guess we'll stick with this demo for now. <laughs> Sorry, Sharmax. Yeah. All right. Uh, how much brighter does it get compared to the other OLED? This, there, you know what's really interesting about this demonstration is they both have the same peak white luminance. In fact, this, they're within 50 nits of each other. They're both about 1,300 nits, these two TVs. But this TV... The R plus G plus V additivity only goes to 600 nits. So every color that's above 600 nits is really relying on that white subpixel to boost the luminance up. This TV is 1300 nits of pure RGB color all the way up and down. Uh, here this display week, is there other new quantum dot uh, innovations happening in the micro LED area or something? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we don't have it here actually, but our, our friends over at Nagase across the road here have it. Uh, quantum dot color conversion is a really important thing for micro LED displays. Um, and so we're showing a demo there where we're showing inkjet printed and photolithography patterned uh, quantum dots on top of micro LED. Number of papers here um, at the show that have um, you know, UV micro LEDs with RGB quantum dots on top. Um, almost everybody who's looking at micro LED is, is looking at uh, color conversion as well. Is there a competition happening at your booth? Well, there, there is. I think some guy named Frank, does he still have the high score? Yeah. Michelle, you can't beat him? No. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, we're just having a friendly competition using the MetaQuest Pro. This is one of our favorite new quantum dot displays, actually. Uh, a lot of people may not realize it, but inside Pro VR headset is a mini LED LCD um, uh, display with quantum dots inside. So it's a great example of quantum dots delivering vivid color and awesome brightness. And we're actually watching Michelle play here on a TV with a 240 hertz refresh rate, kind of gaming TV with, of course, quantum dots inside.
because uh, when you do VR, you want to have very high brightness. Yeah, high brightness and really wide color gamut because you want to you know, mimic the natural world or even go beyond the natural world. Why stop there, right? And so you can use color to create these amazing experiences. And there's some very big brands launching VR things soon, and we, we don't know what display they're going to use. We don't know. We have no idea. We don't know. Yep. No idea. And what's happening here with the... <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, yeah, here we can see Frank's score. I don't think anyone's going to beat 741,000 uh, on uh, Beat Saber. I don't know. Uh, this wall, we're calling this Mini LED equals Quantum Dots. A lot of people don't maybe realize when you see Mini LED today, uh, it really means quantum dots. Um, just about every product on the market with mini LED technology is using quantum dots today. 100% of TVs that use mini LED use quantum dots. Uh, and they do that for a few reasons. One is, it's of course, great color, wide color gamut, super high brightness. The quantum dots are very stable, and so they can be driven to very high brightness. This TV here is uh, 22, 2300 nits peak luminance. There's a TCL TV out there that somebody just measured at 3,200 nits with quantum dots inside, so super bright. And quantum dots are also very fast, and that's an area that people haven't talked about a lot, but it's great for mini LED because in mini LED you have, you have thousands of zones uh, of, back, of uh, mini LEDs in the backlight. When you have a fast moving object moving across the screen, you need the backlight to keep up. And some phosphors are actually very slow. They respond on the order of eight milliseconds. And so you have color shifts and kind of color ghosting and banding problems. Quantum dots respond in nanoseconds. So it's perfect color all the time, no matter how fast your refresh rate. Uh, we also see that in IT products. This is a great ASUS gaming monitor and an MSI um, notebook here with a mini LED quantum dot display. Um, super bright and showing some, some gaming content with some analysis there. So, um, All right. Good stuff. Uh, what's on these walls here? So here, cyber sickness. <laughs> cyber sickness. Yeah, it's one of the reasons we think that the VR community is using some quantum dots. So one of the problems for VR is lag, right? And so if you turn your head and the display doesn't update in time, you start to feel sick. And so if you're gonna use an LCD and you're gonna use uh, one of these slower phosphors, you're waiting for the phosphor to warm up, you can solve that, but you have to put a delay in the video. You have to delay the video and say, I'm gonna look ahead and make sure my phosphor is ready and warmed up, but it, there's no time for delay on VR, right? And so you need to have a really fast display that can keep up. Over here, we're talking about a new kind of color metrology, a new way to think about measuring brightness in displays. We're talking about nits, which is a measurement that people are very familiar with. It's a popular sort of marketing. I just talked about a bunch of nits kind of scores here. And, um, but nits don't tell the whole story of brightness. In fact, nits only measure the sort of black and white response of our eye, the way we perceive color. And uh, there's something called the hemholtz kohlrausch effect, and we're kind of showing that here. And what we're seeing is that all of these patches are the same luminance. And in fact, they're the same luminance as this gray background. They appear much brighter to our eye, and that's because they're very saturated colors. And the HK, or helmholtz kohlrausch effect, tells us that the more saturated a color is, the brighter it appears to our eye. And this new metric called Experience Color Range that Samsung Display developed captures that. And you see that this here. So this is the brightness from black to white. This is kind of luminance or nits. This is uh, colorfulness or chromaticity, color gamut. And here we're following the XCR line, which is the distance from black along the, the, uh, the color there. And you can see that you get a much um, higher score for high color display. So the QD OLED, for example, scores very high. That Vizio TV, in fact, scores higher than this uh, $2,800, $3,000 uh, white OLED TV, for example. A few years partnership with the Vizio now. Yeah, in 2015 they started. So uh, they're one of the early ones, actually. Yeah, TCL, Samsung, Vizio, among the first to adopt QD. And I saw you were walking around doing videos uh, here at the show. Yeah. Uh, and you are doing a regular show? We do a regular show. It's called The Display Show. It's on the Nanosys YouTube channel. Uh, Brian Berkeley is our host, and he's a sort of um, you know, VIP of the display industry. Uh, and he's been doing it for a long time. And um, yeah, we went around and found some of our favorite uh, uh, technologies here, a lot of micro LED things and, and other good demos. Only stuff with the quantum dots? Oh, no, no, no. No, we, no? Brian we has fun. It's sponsored by Nanosys, but it's really Brian's show. And so we, we, we covered some OLED stuff and um, yeah, you name it. Uh, it's one been of, an awesome show. It has been. You know, one of my favorite demos There's is... There's one more day. It's not finished, but I it's know. awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of my favorite ones was uh, Kenichiro Masaoka. He's the guy who invented the BT2020 color gamut. He's showing some really cool new measurement stuff over there, and he's somebody we talked to today, too. So check him out if you haven't already. 
So here, the display week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.